so 2020 recap, uh, the, the stats are in. We can talk about some particular things. I think the first thing we should pop up are new listings. So uh, how many new listings did we see for the month of November? Uh, you know, lacking indicators, we look back in November. Uh, some of the stats that we're going to see coming up, uh, maybe in the middle of January, will reflect the December stats. So this is basically um, for the month of November. We are down about 1% for new listings, which is not that big of a deal. So the, the n amount of listings that have come to market uh, so far for the month of November in 2020 compared to the month of November 2019 are about the same. So nothing more, nothing less, pretty consistent. Um, Scott, do you have any feedback on the new listings? Not so much, except what we are seeing is so much of an increased demand because a lot of our viewers out there who might be buyers right now are thinking, well, my goodness, if the listing inventory is relatively the same as last year, why are we losing out on houses? Why are we one of 10, 15, 20 offers consistently? Well, that is because the demand is so high, as we've said in previous videos and so forth, because the interest rates are so low. Yeah, interest rates are low. Demand is probably twice as high uh, this year yeah. as it was last year. So that probably affects some of the stats we have coming up regarding closed sales and regarding the inventory. So let's move on to the next one. Number of closed sales for the month of November, uh, up 12.4%. So 1,612 sales in Orange County for single family detached homes. So there are more closed sales so far, uh, 2020 November compared to 2019 November. So that means with the same amount of homes coming to market essentially, and an increase in closed sales, that means that inventory has gotta be really tight and it's probably due to what Scott mentioned earlier, an increase in demand. Yeah, absolutely right. But I think too, what this tells us is there had been we didn't know what was going to happen mid-March when, when COVID struck and, and whatnot. And we know our industry was made essential, but the buyers and sellers out there, what this number shows us is that they've decided to move on with life, all with you know safe practices and so forth and so on, which we've navigated and pivoted and been able to manage. And I think throughout our industry, throughout the country, we're seeing that buyers and sellers have chosen to continue on turning the page to the next chapter of life. That's what this tells me. I agree with you there. Um, but the question everybody asks, right, especially in Orange County, what's my home worth? What are what are homes selling for these days? And we look at two different indicators here. We look at median uh, sales price and we look at average sales mm -hmm. price. So right now, the median sales price uh, is up 12 uh, percent. Nine hundred and thirty thousand is the median sales price for Orange County. Big number for average up 17.6 uh, percent. 1,247,643 is the average sales price for the month of November um, for Orange County. So it, we like looking at median versus average. Um, reason why is because the average might be brought up by a big outlier. So maybe sometimes that, uh, you know, we'd like to look at the median there. But with 1,612 closed sales, maybe that sample size is large enough to, hey, the average uh, close price for a single family detached in Orange County being above 1.2 million. That's that's huge. That's a big year for 2020. You know, Lane, it is an absolutely huge year and something that I was thinking about. I got a call from my uh, financial advisor the other day for a, you know, a portfolio review. And as part of a portfolio is your real estate investment. If you've got more than one house or even your, your main single family home, it's part of your portfolio. So understanding where that value is, I think is really important moving into 2021, whether you're thinking about selling or not. So it's great news uh, that the uh, average and the median prices are up, but knowing that number can be important for you. And I will throw out a little shout out for us. If you'd like a real estate review on your real estate assets, feel free to reach out to our, us. We do that complimentary. It's easy breezy. We cr provide a custom curated report. We send it right off to you. But understanding that right now, that's where it is. And like all markets, there'll be ebbs and flows probably, but uh, fantastic uh, increase this year, as Lane mentioned. Yeah, a huge population, the baby boomer population, they're about to retire or they're in the process of retiring, some soon to be retiring. So I know they're keeping an eye on their investment portfolios, investment portfolios, a lot of them following the bond market, following the stock market. And because of COVID and some of the news, we've, we've seen a lot of volatility. And overall, I'd say the marketplace has is up year to date um, if you're just following major indexes. Um, however, 12% increase for a real estate with a steady increase over the years. So that wasn't volatile, it was a steady increase. So a lot of our, our baby boomers that are current homeowners are seeing a nice return in their real estate portfolios. Absolutely. 
All right. The next one that we have to bring up, I believe, is inventory. Let's see the banner up there. Inventory down 18%. There's no surprise. So that, again, with the same amount of homes coming to market, essentially, in November 2020 versus 2019, and then an increase of closed sales, meaning that the demand is high and with less with more homes um selling and not an increase of inventory coming to the market that means that inventory is going to be down so inventory down 18 percent year over year that is absolutely huge so um any thoughts on inventory scott no absolutely and lane i know you're our stats guy and we're so grateful for what you do uh to make this so easy for us to understand those of us that are more you know artistic types but what that tells me is it ties into that available supply of inventory because we're not seeing homes staying on the market one week two weeks, 30 days even, we're seeing homes literally go from launch to sale within a matter of 42, 70, you know, 48, 72 hours. And I think that's what this is telling me, uh, given all the other numbers that we previously talked about is there's just no supply of homes for sale because they fly off the shelf so quickly. Yeah, they've been flying off crazy in 2020. And one of the other inventory stats that we like to look at, we like to look at the month supply of inventory. Now, the reason why we look at, at month supply is because his, history has shown if you're right around that four to five percent, four to five month supply of inventory, it's considered a neutral market. As soon as you get to six or plus, it's considered a buyer's market. If you're under four, it is considered a seller's market. Well, it's been steadily going down since the beginning of the year, most recently clocking in at 2.2 down 15.4 percent so the month supply of inventory is telling us that it's heavily leaning in favor of a seller's market right and i will qualify that again lane thanks so much for the accurate stats there when we say 2.2 months i don't want you to think well gee scott you just said houses are flying off the shelves in a matter of hours i'm kind of going to a microcosmic our world uh, which is uh, mostly orange county and the uh, surrounding cities that attach orange county we're seeing in the price ranges that we work with most of our clients that even further accelerated uh, shortened days on market. Yeah, so that we'll get to the days on market in a second as well. Uh, month supply of inventory, basically, however much, oh, however many homes are you know for sale in Orange County, that's how long it's going to take to if if nothing else comes to market with based on the current supply. So basically, they're saying if nothing else comes to market based on the current inventory, it's going to take two point two months to sell everything. And so now the fact that we're about half of what's considered neutral market, this means that if inventory essentially doubles overnight, we're still considered historically being in a neutral market, not favorable the buyers not favoring the sellers so we're drastically undersupplied right now so one of the things that we're going to be looking at at least for our buyers sake coming going into 2021 is an increase in inventory that will kind of balance out the marketplace hopefully if that if that does um, come to fruition absolutely lane you know what? thanks so much for clarifying i still for me i have trouble disseminating between days on market and uh, average months of inventory so our listeners out there lane's got it right i was a little off base on that Oh, no big deal. So uh, let's slide into um, days on market until sale for where this is for November, Orange County, single family detached. It's down almost half, Scott. So November 2019, again, it's the holidays. We think that, hey, real estate maybe slows down around Thanksgiving, picks up again after Super Bowl. That's historically been known as a kind of a mantra in the real estate marketplace. But the average days on market until sale is 29 down 42%. So that's the average. I know the Sack and Stone team listings are selling a little bit quicker than that, but it's still nice to know that in this marketplace, if you're asking top dollar and you're putting a for sale sign in your front lawn, it's probably coming down in less than 30 days. Ditto that lane. You're, you're right on the money there. Yeah. Okay. So um, any thoughts about how we're wrapping up 2020, Scott, before we jump into predictions for 2021? I think what we're doing is what we've really pretty much done for the last several decades that we've been in the business and since uh, you've been a part of our team lane and that is just wrapping up the year with uh, answering questions, providing extra data information for clients uh, that have uh, bought and sold this year and those that are uh, in their homes and thinking 2021 might be the time for a move. This is a time of year and especially this year, I think with the current uh, situation where a lot of folks are curtailing holiday travel, they're staying home. My suggestion is the time to kind of look at your 2021 plans and what might that hold for you? As we know, there will be an increase in inventory of homes for sale coming this uh, winter and early spring. So we at the Sack and Stone team like to be what we call in consultation mode in December, which is let's talk. Uh, 
no topic is off limits. Anything you're thinking, no matter how wild it would be, maybe I'm thinking of moving to Portland, Maine. I don't know, but we like to be in consultation mode and just get the dialogue going, answer questions, never any obligation, but just get those creative juices flowing so you get into the new year with a solid action plan in place. That sounds good to me. It's always nice to start off the year with organized, with a plan of action and the whole nine.